Hey folks, this is just a couple of uh, news clips from uh, oh years ago, six to ten years ago, about soft sets and uh, the movement and all that stuff. So it's been around a long time. Like I said before, it's not something brand new. Uh, it's getting a little less well defined. Uh, and as you all know, they've never won anything. They've never stood on the merits of their sovereign citizen beliefs. Uh, it's all garbage. Uh, we know it's garbage. I know it's garbage. You know it's garbage. Uh, they're the only ones that don't seem to realize that they're fighting a losing battle. But that's what they're doing. Anyway, uh, let's check these news clips out, shall we? Our call six investigates team is digging into the activity of homeowners claiming they are exempt from city rules. They also believe you should pay them millions of dollars. Call six investigator Rafael Sanchez joins us with what he's found out. Todd and Erica, good evening. We've been tracking the sovereign movement now for nearly five years. Some use fake badges and vehicle plates in hopes of avoiding the law. Others, like these two homeowners, are demanding that you pay them big bucks. 539 Auburn and its multiple vehicles. A talker among people who fear complaining openly about their neighbor. This drew the attention of a city code inspector. And since 2014, it's been an ongoing situation. But Brent Allen Swaller says he has no obligation from God to obey the wrongdoer's commands. Claiming his sovereignty, he's opposed to the city's rules. Despite our multiple visits, Swaller's never answered his door. We wanted to know more about his demand that taxpayers pay him a dollar for every minute his rights are violated. He also wants you to pay him $1.5 million out of the city treasury. Sovereign citizens are a distinct brand of anti-government extremists in the United States. The Southern Poverty Law Center tracks anti-government and hate groups across the country. It's hard to track sovereigns because they act as individuals in opposing laws. The Southern Poverty Law Center views every organization uh, from the Elks Club to the American Legion to sovereign citizens as terrorist organizations. So I don't put a lot of faith in what they say, but, but we know they're, they're just some knucklehead faction of the United States and other countries. Anyway. Using their own interpretation of the U.S. Constitution. These ideas are not simply just sort of fantasies or cons. These are ideas that when they cut to the core of what people believe, they think that they're at war with the federal government and they'll go to whatever ends they need to uh, to protect their ideas. On the other side of Indianapolis, this tidy property is also at the epicenter of another legal fight. John Jones Bay is claiming to be an aboriginal indigenous Moorish American. In other words, a sovereign. He's taking on the county treasurer, recorder, auditor, and the governor for taxing his property. Bay filed a federal lawsuit in October. He wants them to cease and desist the administrating of his property without his consent. That, he says, is causing him mental anguish and distress, which he says are crimes against humanity. But Bay says it can all be resolved if the city pays him for 40 years of property taxes with interest and penalties, which he believes totals $556 million. On top of that, he wants an extra $11 billion. How do we characterize in this movement? Is this something that we have to be worried about, or can we dismiss it? Yeah, I, I, without a doubt, sovereign citizens are something to worry about. Both men in our stories have pending cases in federal court in Indianapolis. Often these cases are called paper terrorism because the courts are flooded with paper that in the end has no value. Yep, they file a bunch of frivolous lawsuits. So we've all heard that. We've seen the videos. It's all just a bunch of nonsense. They tie up the court's time. A lot of them get sent to prison for uh, wasting uh, or filing fraudulent documents and stuff like that. But yep, they still keep doing it. They just don't get it. Anyway, let's watch one more short news clip. There is a group of people living amongst us who walk like us, talk like us, and act like us, but they say they are different. They don't believe in the United States, and they say they're independent from our country's government. Well, are they smart? Are they crazy? Are they dangerous? Fox 8's Mish Carr has this report on sovereign citizens. You can decide for yourself. We're all born sovereigns. We're all born free. 
The idea of sovereignty is there's no jurisdiction, there's nothing above me. They decided to check out um, from federal and state laws. Realism, true facts never get, in the, you know, never get in the way of this movement. The word sovereign means possessing supreme or ultimate power. Those that declare themselves sovereign believe only in their own authority, and getting into the movement begins with a tangible declaration. I, James Ronald the Peggs family, am a natural, freeborn sovereign without subjects. Jim Peggs is one of about 300,000 Americans the FBI classifies as sovereign citizens, though Peggs doesn't like that term because citizen means subject of. I am not in any jurisdiction, for I'm not a subject status. He doesn't pay taxes. He believes our paper money is worthless. The only laws he observes are those he agrees to follow, discarding those he says aren't but, uh, legitimate. No such laws, nor their enforcers, have any authority over me. Well, that's enough of uh, that foolishness. I made this video because I'm going to make another video about monetization, uh, demonetization, how videos get monetized, the process that uh, creators have to go through. Sometimes they have to go through two processes or maybe three because the video gets demonetized before it even gets published. Uh, so I'm going to show that process and that is what this video is for. So anyway, have a great day. Goodbye.